determined by context. And the proof of this is the same word in a different context has a completely different meaning. If I say, let's go up to my place, up has one meaning. If I say, fill this glass up, up has a completely different meaning. And that's true of everything. A context is like a holder, a place or a, a piece of gear that holds something, you know, like a, a musical instrument case. It's molded exactly to the shape of the instrument, so it holds and protects it and gives a nice view of it. So in the same way, our contexts determine what we can have or what will show up as content and how it will show up and what it will mean. Let's take a look at this channel going all the way back to the beginning. What has it been about? What has been the context in which it is held? With the context that I hold it or, or held it in, and the one that you should also, if you've been following this, understanding it, is that it's aimed at the enlightenment of the individual. It's a set of tools for the individual to use to free themselves to decondition themselves from material consciousness and to relax into the natural spiritual consciousness, which is actually already there. But anyway, you know that whole story. So we've been teaching and presenting and discussing the various sacred texts and experiences and so on in the context of the individual attaining enlightenment. Because the way this channel started out was kind of like a vlog, you know? A diary online in the form of videos. And that kind of morphed into something more than that, but that's the basic idea. I was gonna document my own spiritual work, my own sadhana and realizations. So I did that, and I also did a lot of explaining things <laughs> for the purpose of individual self-realization. But now I want to change that context. I want to change the context that I hold this channel in. And you should also switch to the same context so that you understand where I'm coming from. And when I say something, you can get the right meaning because you're holding it in the proper context. So then there can be a flow of thoughts, a duplication of thinking, of, of views. See? And that we can start a dialogue that leads someplace. So, what is this new context? Well, let's create a really big context. Huh? This channel, we've been talking about the context, is only like 10 years old. And although my spiritual work goes back to like age three, 70 years, uh, only the last 10 years or so has been adequately recorded and documented. A little bit more than that, 
some of my previous work is still floating around. But mainly, we have focused on the last 10 years and tried to sum up the experiences of a lifetime, the wisdom of 50, 60, 70 years of study, and all of that within the context of me, one person, one individual, striving for enlightenment. And what did I do and what happened and like that. But now I want to expand that context. That's a little small context. The last 10 years or even the last 50 or 70 years of my life. Now, I want to blow the whole thing up and look at the history of the universe from the beginning. Now, whether you accept the scientific story of the Big Bang and evolution, or whether you have a more uh, theocratic viewpoint and you believe in the creation and all of this, doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Because whichever story you accept or believe in, the beginning of the universe, things move very, very slow. And as time goes on, lots and lots of time, <laughs> it gradually speeds up huh? from the primordial soup of uh, an electron gas just after the Big Bang. Gradually, over billions of years, atoms form. And from those atoms, molecules. And then stars form. And they fuse those into heavier molecules, heavier elements. And then planets form. And then gradually, life forms, organic life, and develops from microorganisms to plants to sea animals, gradually to land animals, to mammals, to primates, and finally, human beings. Huh? Or whatever creation story whatever evolutionary uh, development you believe in, because it's all a matter of belief. We can't go back and check it by observation. So it's all a matter of speculation and indirect evidence. But <coughs> all of these have the same thing in common. It takes a long time for it to get started. But what we call History has only existed for maybe 10,000, 15,000 years. And in that time, we've gone from an agrarian culture and a lot of wandering uh, groups of hunter-gatherers to building cities and launching rockets to the moon and computers everywhere. So even just within modern human history, the last 30 or 50 years, technology has advanced at an ever increasing place. Now, this is called accelerated evolution. It's quadratic evolution, multiplied evolution. Huh? exponential curve. It goes along for a long time, seemingly nothing is happening, then suddenly it reaches an inflection point and there's an elbow in the curve and then it goes straight up. So why is the universe accelerating? Why are the quantum changes Huh? that come along every few million years, happening closer and closer together. Why is 
the explosion of information and novelty and creativity in the human species, now expanding through the internet at ever increasing rates. Why has nature nominated us at this crucial point in history to deal with humanity's impact on the planet and on each other? which is, you know, pretty much less than ideal, very much less than ideal. So our context is now going to expand to include the whole human race, all sentient life and the whole planet and the emergency situation that human beings have got themselves into and how the ancient wisdom can help us get through this. And of course, the answer is that we have to change. We created this mess by resource extraction, by overdevelopment, overpopulation, huh? no political will to undo the damage that we've done to the planet, and so on. Bad habits. We all have a lot of bad habits, beginning with the ego. And so the spiritual message is always about dissolving the ego. And the classical spiritual methods took years to do that. But we don't have years. Or we don't have decades. We maybe have years to undo a lot of the damage that we've done with our bad habits. So we have to change our ways. And nature has given us a tool. Besides the classical spiritual paths, methods, and teachings, there's also the sacraments. You knew I was coming to this eventually, right? <laughs> The sacrament, the holy plant, the medicine that cures the disease of ego. And now this is very threatening to the people who personify the structures and the mode of uh, conducting human civilization that has been established on this planet over the last 2,000 years. This is very threatening to them because they have made a tremendous effort to structure the human ego in a certain way, to structure the society in a certain way through the use of linear verbal media. Okay, this is, this is a form of practical magic that you can imbue an entire population, an entire civilization with a certain way of looking at life through literature and through ritual based on that literature. So this is an old, old trick. Huh? Government and religion, hand in hand, best buds. So we're saying that this is the cause of our problems. So transcending it is going to be part of the solution. And on a personal level, that means dissolving the ego that was created by the hard labor <laughs> of our parents and teachers and friends and government and big corporations and so on, and undoing all their work and creating a different ego, a different identity, a different self, a different way of looking at the world that's more in tune with nature, that's more back in balance, huh? to push the pendulum back the other way toward a transcendent uh, antiquarian revival or modern primitive revival of the values 
that actually made human beings human. And part of that is shamanism and the sacraments of the goddess. And so we're going to be putting more emphasis on that lens and on what we can do, practically speaking, to solve these huge problems that are before us now. So we look forward to working with you in this new context and trying to encourage you and help you to solve the big problems that face us in the world today. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.